And so coming out of college, I was making about $85,000 a year in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is a pretty expensive place to actually live. And so my take home pay was around $4,000 a month. What's up everybody? This is Jay from Interview Query here. New camera, by the way. So if I look a little bit clearer, then you guys know why. Dusted it off in my closet. And this angle is really like... Okay, much better. Where was I? Today, I am talking about data science salaries. Exactly how much do data scientists actually make? I've seen a lot of different salaries out there. On Glassdoor today, it said $112,000 mean and then on indeed the average was $120,000 on pay scale the average base salary was $95,000 and then on levels.fyi the median salary was 150k with a whopping $238,000 median salary in the San Francisco Bay Area which I honestly don't believe maybe just out of straight up envy but also for the fact that I also submitted a fake salary on levels like FII of $400,000 and they accepted it. So, who knows. But exactly how can we tell how much data scientists make it definitely depends on the kind of company you're at. Today I'll go over my experience on how much I made as a data scientist because I think tracking career progression actually really matters when it comes to talking about salaries and talking about how much experience matters, what kind of company that you're at the size of the company, and just how much money that they're willing to pay you. And then lastly, we can talk about how much money actually matters in the scope of data science itself. All right, so how much did I exactly make in data science throughout my career, right? So I started out of college back in 2015, and I had two offers from two different companies. One was from Workday, and they offered $95,000 in base salary, plus $60,000 over four years in terms of stock. And so this turned out in terms of total compensation to $110,000. Uh, the role was actually not within data science, which is actually why I didn't take it, but the role was a software engineer in performance. The other offer I actually had was from Inflection. And this is actually the role that I did take, which was as a marketing analyst. Um, they offered $85,000 in terms of base salary plus $5,000 a bonus after you completed one year. Why did I choose one offer over the other? And why did I take this $25,000 pay cut? The Workday offer was interesting because I interviewed out of college for the role and they didn't actually ask me any technical questions at the time. 2015 leak code wasn't really around. I also just hated algorithm questions in general. And so when Workday just didn't ask me any algorithm questions, they like laughed around, joked, we talked about the projects I did and then they gave me an offer. I was actually really happy about it. And this was more money than I've ever seen before. Making six figures out of college was insane proposition to me. But I ended up not taking it because in general, I, I thought that if I took the role as a marketing analyst, I'd have more opportunities to do better and actually transition into data science later on after a year or so because the actual role and my boss was very like interesting. He uh, had a lot to teach me. It seemed like from our interview, then I figured that I would just take that role instead. And so coming out of college, I was making about $85,000 a year in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is a pretty expensive place to actually live. And so my take home pay was around $4,000 a month. Actual amount of savings on $4,000 a month in the San Francisco Bay Area is pretty light, it's pretty minimal. I didn't really actually have that much left over. And so quickly I realized that this was probably like the minimum amount that I needed coming out of college. But as a new grad, generally, you know, when you haven't even seen money at all within college, having this was a great opportunity anyway. After working at Inflection for around three or four months, I figured out that the company just wasn't really for me. I wasn't really learning a lot. My boss told me that he was leaving in the first two weeks I was there. I figured it was probably a good time for me to probably leave after a few months, given that there wasn't really much for me to do there. And I wasn't actually able to develop my skills. And so I was kind of kicking myself over not taking the job at Workday. But eventually it all worked out because I, then I started a job at Jobber, which some of you guys know. And I worked there as a data scientist working on the recommendation algorithm. And so I talked a little bit about how I got that job before, but essentially I actually found it on Jobber. They reached out, came in for an interview, and eventually they gave me an offer for $80,000, which was a $5,000 pay cut, but with also 0.5% equity. And so 
With this 0.5% equity, I thought this would be pretty interesting because it was based on the valuation of the company at the time, which was $10 million. So they had raised a seed round and essentially they raised $2 million on a $10 million valuation. And so with my 0.5%, I was therefore entitled to about $50,000 over the course of four years at that current valuation with the possibility of it also going up later on. And then additionally, in the employment contract, they mentioned that if they had raised the Series A, then my actual salary would go up to $100,000 once that Series A had actually gone through. And so I was under the impression that I'd be, one, learning a ton, so I'd be stupid not to take the job anyway because no one else even really wanted me. And then two, it was a good enough proposition in terms of comparing the amount of equity I would get with also the kind of lower base salary for being a seed stage startup. I thought that was a fair kind of compensation for me at the time, especially as like a new grad coming out of college without that much to learn, but just being kind of scrappy and willing to work longer hours just to learn a lot and actually contribute to a company and ship code in production. So that was Jobber and that was actually basically the first six months of my career there. And essentially after six months of working there, we ended up getting acquired by Monster. Generally how acquisitions work are that bigger company will you know, consume a, large, a lot of smaller company like Jobber and Monster was interested in Jobber for their Tinder for Jobs type of app. Monster actually acquired Jobber for about $12.5 million. And so to me that was like pretty amazing. I had worked there for only six months and all of a sudden now all of my equity was now being accelerated and uh, vested immediately, which meant that I got paid out four years essentially of working there when I only worked there for six months. And so that whole 0.5% was gonna be turned into liquid cash for me and for everyone else, especially for the founders who would make it out with millions. With my 0.5% equity, I thought with that calculation, I'd be getting approximately $62,000, right? Uh, no, that's not how it works, right? And so essentially, when a bigger company acquires a smaller company, essentially there's lawyers that help out with some of the fees, there's brokers that work with selling the company, there's a bunch of other lawyers that come in again and take the fees, there's investor liquidity preferences where they take more money out because they're guaranteed multiple of revenue when there's a sale. And so at the end of the day, what actually came into my pocket pre-tax was around $40,000 from that sale. And so you can expect from any kind of acquisition that maybe like a third of that amount you're originally supposed to get, even if it goes for above the valuation of the company that they raised, goes into the hands of a bunch of different people, you know, greasing the wheels, I don't know, it's above my pay grade. But in general, this was a ton of money for me, just like one year out of college in 2016, to get like a $40,000 a bonus essentially for working there for six months. And so I really felt fortunate at the time. I felt super lucky just to be able to join a company for six months and get out with an acquisition uh, under my belt. Also, I got a raise to about $110,000 afterwards in base salary with the added bonus, making my total compensation at $150,000 per year. With that amount, it was definitely life-changing. Entering six figures for the first time was crazy to me because just a year prior to that, I was making about half that much at my former company. And so can't stress about how much it actually matters to maybe one, get lucky, but also two, to focus on developing your skills because ultimately that's what you're being hired for. And if, even if you're not making money initially out of school, or making that much at a position, you gotta have to remember to set yourself up to succeed in the environment that you're actually in so that you can further develop those skills and make more money later on in life. So after the acquisition, essentially we were also given an earnout at Jobber. So an earnout is effectively when the larger company acquires a smaller company, they build out these revenue targets or different kinds of metrics that you have to hit in which then you can actually get more of that money from the acquisition as well. Every single year after the first year that we got acquired, on my contract, I was able to receive up to forty dollars to $50,000, depending on which kind of metrics and earn out kind of targets we would hit. Uh, we forecasted that we hit probably 90% of them, and so my take home total compensation for every year after that, if my base pay did not increase, was gonna be around $150,000 per year. And so after that year, in 2017, I had done about a year and a half at Jobber at that point. And a year after acquisition, our whole company within Jobber, the startup, actually negotiated a raise for ourselves from our parent company. And so two years of experience and two years out of college, I got a bump up to $130,000 
making my total gross pay at $170,000 for total compensation. On my third year out of college in 2018, towards October, you know, September-ish, I started interviewing. Everyone at Jogger had by that point kind of left. The founders had left. My co-founder and interview query, Shane, had also left. And I was looking to leave as well because the original culture wasn't there anymore. And so I started interviewing around. I knew I probably wasn't gonna get the same amount of like total compensation that I had had previously at $170,000 unless I interviewed at bigger companies and so I initially just really wanted to focus on valuing culture and also valuing total compensation as well but ultimately finding like a company that would suit most of my needs. Within that time, I actually signed up for Hired and next door, the company that I ended up working for actually reached out on Hired after I sent my base salary that I was expecting to receive. Now that I've actually learned a lot more about negotiation, learned a lot more about data science interviewing, I don't actually recommend using Hired because of the fact that if you do set your salary at a specific threshold, then a lot of the times companies will use that when they're negotiating with you in terms of making you probably setting a salary expectation that's lower than what they're actually able to give you right for your amount of years of experience and so many times if you go into an interview you want to withhold what your salary expectations are until the end so that when they give you the first offer it might be bigger and better than anything that you ever expected but hired is still a great place to try to get more and more jobs also get just more incoming kind of offers when you don't actually want to go out and apply for you know x number of jobs while you're interviewing at Nextdoor, I went through the process, I went on the on-site interview, I had a great time meeting everyone, so I really liked it, and they gave me an offer of actually 145000 which was lower than what I was expecting, since I actually put it in my hired profile at one fifty. And so, with that, I knew that basically their whole goal was to bring your expectations lower so that you can negotiate up. And so I ended up negotiating up to $155,000 with a 20K sign-on bonus, bringing my total compensation for that year to $175,000. In addition to that, I did get some equity as well, but it's harder to count that because a lot of the times the financing around that is very difficult for a long-term unicorn like Nextdoor when you don't really know when they're going to exit, even though there is a secondary market as well. Ultimately, after I worked there for a year, I ended up quitting to join Interview Query where I'm making zero dollars, or not really zero dollars, but definitely less than $175,000 a year. I kind of showed that at that progression in my career, if I had looked for another job again, I probably would have been able to reach a level of $190,000, maybe $200,000. If it was Facebook, if it was Google or Amazon, then potentially even more, given how much data scientists were making within those levels. And so I'd say there's a couple rules and there's a couple things that you should think about when you're getting all of these like different numbers, different salaries, and to try to really understand when you're in the negotiation process, and also when you're looking to break into data science and you see these salaries and you think that they're, you know, off the charts crazy, right? Which, retrospectively, they really are. So the first rule that I have is what should you do with the salary information? Rule number one is to never compare yourself with other people, right? That's a recipe laden with failure. You can only really compare yourself to yourself previously, right? And I'd say that when you compare yourself with others, you're doing unfair comparison in terms of what other people have done with their lives, how they might have gone about it, what their experiences might have been, how lucky they might have been you know, in this case. I think in general, if you think about how someone could be really dedicated to their job, love to work in data science, software engineering, works like 16 hours a day, then maybe, yeah, they do deserve that, you know, 300, 400K salary that they have. Rule number two is to definitely determine your own market value. A couple tips for negotiations or just salary negotiations in general is to understand where your market value is. You are essentially worth the amount that you can be replaced by anyone else in the field, right? So if you are doing, let's say, BI analysis work, even though you're a data scientist, then you can effectively be replaced as a BI analyst at a lower salary, right? And so it's imperative to actually understand what your role actually needs, what you actually need to do to grow 
and to actually uh, getting to that next level, whether that's being a manager, being a more technical lead, being the business decision maker, any of those things require upskilling yourself. And so understanding what it takes to get to the next level is definitely important as you progress in your career. Rule number three is that you really do have to figure out how much money actually means to you as a whole. A great example of this is that, you know, every single day when I went into work, I didn't feel like I was walking out with, you know, a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars, right? Or whatever that equivalent is in a per hour you really have to understand what your goals are, right? Are you trying to retire early? Are you trying to be financially independent? Okay, then, you know, work as hard as you can, and then eventually you'll be able to retire when you're 35 with millions of dollars, that's great. Are you trying to actually learn a lot? Are you trying to basically take control and join a startup where you know that the money's not gonna be as good? If that's the case, then money shouldn't matter that much to you anyway, right? Rule number four is that you definitely make more money with experience. So a lot of the times when you're just sitting there also doing your job, learning, and suddenly you have 10 years of experience under your belt, people will actually value that. I mean, it definitely depends on your interview, if you can communicate how much value you can bring with your experience, but I've definitely seen people with similar skills, but one person with just more experience is just older, earning a lot more money. That's because at the end of the day, you can't really quantify experience that well, it is still our number one metric in terms of determining how much money someone really should make, especially if you think about people that have experience from bigger tech companies or in general made more previously, people don't really like to go down in salary, right? And so ultimately you do end up getting to a cap, but experience definitely matters a ton. And so just realize that when you break in, there's gonna be 10 more years of just making more and more money as long as you continue to get better and overcome challenges yourself and upskill yourself to become a better and better data scientist. All right, the last rule is that salaries, you know, total compensation definitely will not keep you in data science. This is a reiteration of the other things that I've said before, but almost always, you know, internal happiness, what you actually do at your job, the people that you work with totally will. And so ultimately at the end of the day, you know, these are numbers, they put food, on the table, they give you a house to live, a place to actually live. When I was a new grad, I don't think I was any less happy than I am now or previously when I was making you know double amount of money. I just felt like I was happier because I could just save a little bit of money and prepare for the future and ease some of that anxiety. But in general, it's not like my cost of living has changed dramatically. It's not like I'm going out and drinking or eating double amount, I mean, actually, well, who is now with COVID, but you get my point in that generally, you know, your life will stay the same no matter what. You're gonna go to work every day, you're gonna go out of work every day, you're gonna go hang out with your friends. Most of it keeps it the same. I think more of it should be around what you do, what you have passion of. Don't think about it too much, just work hard, and everything else will come eventually. Also, with that note, please let me know what kind of topics you guys want to hear about next time on YouTube. I'm running out of ideas to talk about. I only have so much history in my life to dish out. So please, please leave a comment, like and subscribe, add basically what kind of things that you want to hear from me about data science. And I will talk to all of you later.